Welcome back to the Red Path. Today I'm joined by Maxine and Katie from Katie Plays 40k on Instagram. We're going to talk about World Eaters, Tyranids, and everything 40k. Fair warning, we also discuss cricket. Hello and welcome back to the Red Path. As you can see, I've got two very special guests with me here today. I've got Maxime and Katie from uh, Katie Plays 40K on Instagram. Ladies, how are you today? Both well, thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, it's, it's a lovely day. So you, you got us on a good day. <laughs> that, that's awesome. Um, I really appreciate you both coming on, taking the time to come on, have a little chat with me and uh, just talk about some Warhammer stuff, um, which... I'm always very thankful to do. Um, so I've got I've got a few questions for you both here. Um, I'm, I'm just going to dive right in. Um, uh, Maxine, I'm going I'm to start with you. So um, this is kind of the token generic question. I'm sure you've both, you know, had to deal with it before when someone you meet for the first time is into Warhammer asks you, but I'm, I'm going to do it because everyone always wants to know. Uh, Maxine first. How did you get into Warhammer or 40k specifically? Um, and, and, and you know, how long have you played? Tell us just a little bit about your backstory with the hobby. Yeah, every time I get this question, I feel like I'm getting older every time because the numbers keep getting bigger and bigger. I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, yeah, about 17 years ago, I was okay. a little 10 year old. Okay. My mum took me to a big shopping mall. She wanted to go and do some shopping, and there was a nice big games workshop shop there. And, you know, I was busy standing outside the front looking at these amazingly painted models, you know, something I can still never do. Yeah. Um, and my mom was just like, okay, just you, you go in there. I go and do my own thing for the next two, three hours. Um, and it's very much this big plastic board, um, guard, uh, Guardian Elder. I was given mm -hmm. a 10 man squad to go and throw out some space Marines. Right. including a Space Marine Dreadnought. Got completely mowed down turn one, but I had so much fun moving them up and pew pew pewing at this yeah. ginormous Dreadnought. Um, my mum then came back and I was just like, I loved it, it's amazing. Um, my mum was then like, okay, did you want some of the models? And I was pointed through all the start collecting kits. And I was like, I love the aesthetics of the Space Marines because it was the one of the only two factions I knew. And they went, hey, you can have Space Marines, but also with spiky bits and demons. Ooh. So then I, I went home with a box of start collecting Space Marine, Chaos Space Marine. Perfect. That was my intro. <laughs> Katie, what about yourself? Um, I got into 40k because Maxine made me. <laughs> made is a strong mean word. Snort, but... <laughs> That's a strong word. Um, I think, how, how long ago was it? It wasn't, Six -ish? I think it was almost 17, 18, so. That's eight years ago. Eight years ago, thank you for getting how old I am. Um, you just started pushing me towards the, the little models you did have, because I think you had your Chaos Space Marines. And what, what Tyranids was it you had that you'd kind of... A, carnif a nice big Carnifex, two Termagants, and one Ripper Swarm. Yeah, and I remember you'd tried to paint the Carnifex, and it looked like someone had gone at it with finger paints. And it hurt my heart seeing this Carnifex looking so awful. And I think that's how you got me started was you can you can paint these things like you can make them look nice. Yeah, you're a very creative person. So I was trying yeah, to sell okay. the creative angle of the hobby. Oh, you had to. I, I committed at first. I was going to paint. I was never going to play. I was just painting. I wanted to collect, have them to display. I wasn't going to play. And you eventually got me playing some some carpet and warhammer, <laughs> a few little little games here and there, literally just with my carnifex going around destroying um, things. Um, and everything, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just eating things. Like we weren't even, I don't even think we were playing rules properly. We were just fighting because who needs rules? <laughs> yeah, using um, the standard data sheets and just saying this can move this for distance and this can hit on this. Yeah, and then it kind of moved on from there. Like your dad has this huge pool table that he would put this massive wooden board on with train set. the train set 
And how big how big was that train set for? Do you do you remember? Yeah, yeah we're talking probably an eight by six feet it's size huge. thing. It's That's huge, like massive. So we started playing on that because obviously that had all the the train set terrain. Um, and again, we weren't even really playing properly. We weren't playing missions or anything. We were yeah. just literally dawn of war stuff. <laughs> kill each other off the bar. Yeah, who who could who could table the other person first? And that was just so fun to me, just destroying things. <laughs> And that's it. I was hooked. That that that's the, the destruction. That that's the purest form of Warhammer. I think it's it's the yeah. game at its heart, isn't it? it it's fuck you. It's wants and destruction, but no one's really getting hurt. It's like yeah. it's perfect, right? Get my emotions when I leave. <laughs> <laughs> you, you win most of the games. I don't know what you're complaining about. Yeah, and it's my your emotions that get broken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sensitive one. Now, I, you know, I have obviously I've been following your bat reps, which which <laughs> I love by the way, and and that's a great progression. That that story there from you know being gently persuaded to to paint some models. Up, you know, you, you, your language between yourselves, that's up to you. But gently persuaded to uh, to paint some models to now to now doing bat reps. I think I think that, that that's really cool, and I I really enjoy. Uh, your bat reps um but i'm i'm, I'm going to talk about those a little bit later let me go yeah. on to um uh, uh, next question and, and again maxine this for you um because as a fellow world eaters player um they, they you know i all respect because you're obviously the greatest faction in the game that you know tyrannids are cool but <laughs> I, I, I i'm sorry so what why I, I mean, obviously, you said you know you, you had this choice um, at the, the Games Workshop store of you know, mm -hmm. Space Marines or spiky Space Marines, but you know there, there's still World Eaters are uh, you know they're a bit of a force unto themselves. They're very unique. Why, what, why did you gravitate towards them, or what, what, what caused you to choose them as kind of your your, your main army? Yeah, I think to start with, there's two main things. Number one, the paint scheme aesthetic, red and gold, mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah. Uh, number two is my favorite models inside that start collecting set were the berserkers. Okay. It came with berserkers. I had a little squad of space marines and possessed, so I could have gone down the word bearers route. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, these angry bunnies <laughs> just said to me, like, this was my calling. Um, so I was reading the little book and I was like, you know, these guys just want to rip and shred. They just want to get in there, get in your face. And I was like, yeah, I, I back this. I, right in my heart, I felt that I did. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. It is. I don't know. That I, I absolutely. That's kind of basically how I felt as well when I was first exposed to them. Um, are there any other armies you play or would like to play or are interested in anything like that, or or is it just world pure world eaters all day every day? No, I'm super interested in lots of factions, and okay. if I'm honest, there's selling points in virtually every faction that's yeah. going round. Yeah um for me on like the sort of like the loyalist space marine front the dark angels are a big aesthetic to me okay. i love the idea of just having an army of terminators mm. and going deathwing and just going you know what i want to come in i just want to be a big tanking blob and just say come get me come yes. kill me <laughs> you're not going to be able to yeah. trust me I, th that is a big selling point to me and i love the red butcher terminators mm. almost for the same reason like yeah. i love these tanky units um another point one is the ultramarines because okay. i really love their uniformity it uh, appeals yeah. to kind of my sort of who i am as a person i love them all there's the same paint scheme i love everything WYSIWYG. i love everything to kind of look like it's coming out of a codex yeah okay. if you've got the pictures next to your data sheets i want them to look like that right otherwise it's probably not that <laughs> and, and ultramarines are that and you know that pretty much sums up them as Faction anyway, yes. like I'm basically Gilliman, <laughs> except nowhere near as powerful or good, <laughs> with extreme limitation. <laughs> oh my god, I'm, I just coughed there. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, um, no, I, I am, um, I hear you. The uh, I, I enjoy Ultramarines. I know that they get a lot of hate. Um, I, mm. you know, they had the the kind of Matt Ward <sighs> poster child kind of. Oh, it, People call them Smurfs. Yeah. <laughs> Too fair, they yeah. look like Smurfs. But... Well, you know, the blue, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but going out from like the loyal, sort of like the Space Marines 
stuff. Like I love the Custodes. I think they look uh, amazing. Yes. I love like the black and gold theme. Yeah. I think it's like the Shadow Kingdom. What are we I I I know who you mean. I, I, they look yeah. they look amazing. I yeah. love the paint scheme. Okay. The only thing that I love means I never get them. Katie hates them. She would never paint them, and I can't. It's paint, my big so. controversial opinion. I think they are the ugliest models. Oh my goodness! Really? The way they do. Wow. Okay. Wow. That, that, that. that is controversial. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> they just, I don't know. There's something about them that just gets under my skin. I just don't like the way they look, and I will never paint them. <laughs> well, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you've put your foot down on that one. Now. Yeah, that's hard line. <laughs> Um, okay, well, well, Katie, what, what about you? Because obviously, um, you, you've played Tyranids uh, mm -hmm. on your on your channel, on your Instagram. You've played Tyranids so far. I know there's been some mention of some Dark Angels. I don't know which of you is is, is going to play them at some point, maybe. Um, how? how what, why did you choose Tyranids? Uh, is it literally because Maxine gave you a con effects and said do this? And if so. Well, presumably that is it. But why have you stuck with them? It, it, what, what connects you to them in the same way that, you know, Maxime had this kind of moment with the world eaters that, you know, many of us have? What, why are you, t you and Tyranids? Well, I'll be honest. At first, yes, I started playing Tyranids because that's what made sense. Um, like I said, I think I was 17, 18 when I started playing, right. so I didn't really have any money. Um, I actually really wanted to play Necrons. Okay. Uh, and I think that's because we played a lot of Dawn of War. Ah, okay. I always play Necrons in Dawn of War because they're the easiest to yeah. play. You love like, their play style, everything. yeah, exactly. You just build little power modules and you just go, right, my Necron yeah. Warriors will not die. They're better than everyone else. I'm just going to blob with Necrons Warriors and go, bleh, and yeah. Death Ball. So, but we kind of had this discussion of, oh, we'll, I'll start with Tyranids because that makes more sense because we it, it would be cheaper to build up that army because you already had some bits. And then we'll look at doing Necrons later down the line. Right. But the more I've been painting and playing with my Tyranids, I just, I'm in love with them. They're like my unruly little bug babies. <laughs> I, I do. I see them as like, they're like my little unruly children that I just throw on the board. And I love them so much. Um, I have got an emotional attachment. The first model I bought for myself was a little Tyrant Guard. Okay. Back when you could buy them as little models. And he is, I'll never use him because... They're rubbish. And <laughs> you can only bring them in squads of three, and we bought it as a one-man <laughs> squad. Yeah. And now you can't use it. <laughs> no, you can't use it as a because you used to be able to bring it just with the um, hive tyrant, didn't you? Um, and I'm 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 just so attached to him. There's something about tyranids because they're just brainless, <laughs> and they just want to eat everything. <laughs> and I love that. No, I. I can also connect with that one as well. I, you know, I. That's a, that's a good answer. So, all right. <laughs> well, um, are, are there any other armies? Oh, obviously, you've mentioned Necrons, mm -hmm. and I, I know, um, you know, like I said, a bit, a bit of talk of some Dark Angels. Yeah. What, what would you like to play as your next army? If, if, if one of those fine, if something else, you know, yeah. where would you like to go next? So we do actually have some dark angels that i need to paint up right. um which we got from the dark vengeance set right, max yeah. got a while ago she obviously got it for the for the chaos yeah <laughs> so they need to be painted up and i think we're going to do a bit of a, a toss up for that it's, it's going to be the army that we both play okay so okay a bit of variation when we're playing so like i can play against something different Maxine can play against something different yeah. so i think that's going to kind of be a shared army for us but other beyond that and i think um because we're still kind of at the start of our collecting journey we've got a long way to go yeah i have quite big ambitions i'd like to get quite a few different things okay you want we want demons more. as well yeah i do want slash demons <laughs> it's all about the aesthetics for me and i, I love the aesthetics of slash i love yeah. the thousand suns i think they're gorgeous um their whole aesthetic is just beautiful um and i think that's really what draws me to an army is how they look painted okay and that that's um, it's kind of like the, the the best reason of you know about this game, right? The, yeah. The, the it, it's the rule of cool or, or ha however yeah. it's known. You do the thing that you like the look of or you like mm -hmm. the lore of or or whatever, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, that that's really cool, and I'll I'll be excited to to see some dark angels on the table because they're a 
They're pretty, I mean? pretty good army right now. Yeah, they mean. Yes, and uh, especially if you go down that kind of Deathwing Terminator. <laughs> yeah. like, ooh, that's gonna that's gonna be that's gonna be. Spicy. You're gonna have to be nice to me, Maxine. <laughs> If, if you play a Deathwing, if you was controlling a Deathwing yeah, Terminator be blob, be Maxine's going to have to <laughs> yeah. pull every trick in the book. You Get can a just 10-man sit blob, go take oath at the moment, go and sit in the middle and say, come take me. Yeah, that'll be, I'll, I'll keep me posted on that one, because that'll be some <laughs> good fighting right there. Um, yeah. Okay, so next question I've got. Um so Maxine, uh, a few months ago, um, when this channel it was kind of small at the time, um, I got my first email from a real person, and it was you. And um, we've kind of we've kind of chatted a bit since then, and um, mm -hmm. and it, it was super exciting, first of all. And I, re I really appreciate you, you know, reaching out because then from there, found out about you know Katie plays forty k and and been following all that. And I I love to see world eaters on the table. That that's my that's any. Oh, me too. It's it's the thing. It's every like bat rep channel I follow is because they have a world eaters army. That's just kind of my thing, right? Um, and I you know I really love the way you both you do your your bat reps. I love the. It's just it's it's just perfect. I I really enjoy them. Um, so I, I kind of rambled a bit there. I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> Like obviously, you you two uh, living together and and playing together. I mean, I mean, how cool is that? I mean, COVID aside, because you know that that's a big deal for all of us, and we're we're all dealing with it in different ways. But the two of you being able to play, I don't know if you talk about Warhammer stuff, you know, uh, outside of the gaming table or whatever. But I mean, I, I, that must be really cool, right? Yeah, it's crazy cool. If, <laughs> yeah. if you wanted a game. You just go, you know what? I, I fancy to play a couple of rounds this evening. You, you can do that. Yeah. Just go upstairs, just set out your models and go, right, let's let's just have a clash. If you just want to practice something out, we can. It's And it's fantastic. And you're playing with your best friend. You're playing with someone who, you know, is around and available pretty much whenever. And yeah. it's, I think it's really exciting, actually. I mean, let's not skirt around the fact that we're so obsessed with playing Warhammer that we, when we bought a house, we made sure that there was space for us to be able to have a game room. Oh, you're living Which is now dream. what we've done and, and got this big table. Yeah. Wait, sorry, I, I didn't I hear a lot what you just said, Max. Warhammer than anything else. Yeah, which is why we've now invested in this big table and oh. basically got a room dedicated purely to kind of hobbying. That that table, let me just say, because uh, I, you know, obviously your first couple bat reps was kind of like on, on an island or a kitchen side. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, was, yeah. Yeah, two two or three of the the realm of battle boards, kind of long ways, and then I don't know three or four bat reps in. Suddenly, there's this magnificent table <laughs> with uh, underrun LED lights, and it's I'm yeah. like, oh wow, there's some production value right there. There's some professionalism. Um, <laughs> So you I literally. So you, uh, you bought your house, or you, mm -hmm. you you moved into your house, and the one of the big things was having hobby space. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that, yeah. That's... Like we had disagreements with family about them saying, "Oh, so you're gonna have a second bedroom, right?" No. <laughs> no. Because if we had a bed in here, we wouldn't be able to have our table. <laughs> what you, you can't about? play forty k if you come and stay. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I've got, a, uh, you said that, I've got a derail, just a second. Um, my, my wife and I, uh, we're looking to move house. And uh, mm -hmm. we, we looked at this beautiful house recently, had everything we want, just need a little work. It had this outdoor shed. Uh, obviously, I, I, I live in the country here in the States, and so you get a lot of land and stuff like that. It had this shed. It was powered, um, insulated, perfect. It had like a workbench. And I was like, I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, my wife says, oh, you could, Put all your tools in there and we could get the lawnmower in there and I'm, yeah and in my head shelves six by four table hobby bench like tools you, you said the... tools you meant like a scalpel yes yeah get out yeah. of your room paint racks Pitches, paint right? yeah but uh, yeah so in my head and uh and you know we, we, we want to get a spare bedroom but could it double up 11 months of the year as a gaming room. I mean... Yeah, that's true. 
<laughs> it's a uh, yeah. It, it and beyond that, um, you know, beyond that, like it is good to have that space, right, for yourself. And you know, luckily for the two of you, it's something and an interest and a hobby you both share and enjoy. So that, that I mean, that's really great that you, you've got a dedicated space for it. Um, we feel very lucky. It, I mean, you 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 you've earned it. You th that's your space. That's um, it's great to have. Um, I am super jealous though because that table kicks ass. I mean, it does. Yeah. <laughs> now, can I do a little quick shout out to the people that built it? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So that the tables from Natural Twenty Tables um, okay. here in the UK. They do custom tables. Um, they can literally you ask them to do something and they'll do it. Okay. Um, so all the LEDs. That's that's all them. Um, and it is just beautiful. And they were so amazing. <laughs> they gave us exactly what we wanted. Yeah, that's we're actually cool. thinking of getting a little dice box to put yeah. on the outside because you it has like a little slot thing around the outside so you can okay. put yeah, things like cup holders. Attachments. Oh, attachments okay. wow, that's really cool. Box. Yeah. They, they're dice just UK based? Just UK. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe we'll move back one day, I don't know. but um... Come back just for the table. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I could sell that. But um, okay, so... What, why did you decide to start doing bat reps? Like, what, what led you, you, you know, whoever, who, who came up with the idea, first of all, and then what, why did you decide to drive forward with it? Katie can take this one. Yeah, so when I first made my little Instagram, I wasn't expecting anything from it. It was just somewhere for me to post my pictures and be able to support, like, other people that were painting that I thought were incredible and get some ideas and inspiration really because my I have a personal Instagram account that I have to keep private for work reasons yeah. so this was like my little space and I just started getting so much interaction with people that I was posting like little cool pictures from like our games when like the big things would go up against each other and I was just getting so much interaction and positive support and people saying oh my god you're so lucky you know um, I love seeing that you're playing games and this is awesome, which kind of led me into this thought of, well, a lot of people can't play games in, pe in person and they're clearly enjoying seeing like little highlights. Let's, let's, let's see if, if people want me to record <laughs> and, and post it. So I put a poll up and I think it was 100% yes, which gave me the little kick to do it. Yeah. Um, and that was it. I mean, it's all recorded on my phone. Um, I literally just upload it. Um, onto my laptop and shove it all into one video file and put it straight onto Instagram. There's like no editing that goes into it. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's all I know how to do. I'm not I'm not really good with technology. Slowly improving. We've got a slightly better phone now. So. Yeah, <laughs> it will get slightly better quality. Slightly better quality anyway. And people have just been like, I'm always waiting for like the shooter drop of people being like, oh, you're you're rubbish. You're, you're doing all this wrong. But people are just so nice. Yeah. All the comments I get, like, oh, keep keep putting these up. I'm really enjoying watching, and um, oh, it's awesome to see like the Tyranids or the World Eaters, and the support is just so nice that I just keep doing it because it's just fun, um, and that's what I see it as. It's not something that I take too seriously. Yeah, it's just fun. It, um, it is what um I, after I watched, I don't know the first. I think there was one. Possibly you just uploaded your second. Uh, mm -hmm. Bat rep, and I, I watched them. For me, um, th this last year has been very busy. A lot of people have suffered in in not having work and things like that. Yeah. I've kind of been lucky in the other way, where I've had almost too much work over the last year because uh, the nature of my job. And you know, I subscribe to. I think I have paid subscriptions to three. You know, uh, tabletop tactics, Hellstorm, cup. You know. Yeah. And, and I, I haven't watched a single bat rep. Maybe maybe one since ninth edition dropped because I, ju I no longer have the time, especially doing this as well. Yeah. And then I stumbled across yours, or, or didn't stumble, but, you know, found yours. And it was like the perfect length, you mm. know, sort of in that 20 to 30 minute range, roughly. Mm. Yeah. It's, you, you do these great little summaries. You you know, you sometimes you show a critical charge or the psychic powers, I know. Um, just... But you, you give the summaries, and I, I think the both of you play off each other really well. Um, Maxine, like, just your, the, the way you're sort of, like, describing what's going to happen. And so sometimes there's some very dry humour there, and, and, and I, I love it. And then, and then just me. 
and, and Kate, your, like your enthusiasm, and um, and you you do seem to get um, that your attachment to your models. I, I know uh, uh, the game where oh, I can't the, the big shooting monster you have. Um, yes, Kren. Exocrine, yeah, I think I think yeah. it got destroyed quite early on, yeah. and um, you you weren't very happy with that, if I remember correctly, and yeah. it kind of showed it, it was it was evident. You should have seen off camera. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to tell anyone that, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I I think that's what makes them so hmm. fun. They number one, just they they're succinct isn't really the right word. But you, you get everything someone wants in, in, in a manageable space of time. And, and that's really great. I, I think there's some channels that do that kind of thing. I don't know. But, um, but you do it with World Eaters. So. That's the so important. Right? Yeah, oh, that's... We appreciate you like the format. And I think, it's, I, th I think that's kind of what we were aiming for as well, just yeah. to make it digestible, particularly on Instagram, which mm -hmm. is where we're putting it. Yeah, you currently. can put it down and watch something for two hours on, on instagram yeah. yeah we'll likely transition some to towards a youtube as we have a bit more to throw out but, yeah um yeah definitely on instagram that's kind of the look we're going for it's just nice little quick summaries to give you an idea of kind of how the battle goes what and also like the kind of rough tactics that we yeah. use just in case people are interested in that kind of thing as well particularly yeah. with katie as a learning kind of player because yeah. that, yeah. that's kind of where your channel was it was like Hi, I'm Katie. I'm kind of like, in, you know, getting quite into Warhammer, but I'm I'm still learning the ropes. This is my journey, kind of thing. Yeah, and I've actually found it really interesting um, recording them. It's kind of forced me to think about what I'm doing as I'm playing, and I think that's just mm. um, made me a better player because I'm actually wanting to explain what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about rather than just going, "Huh, let me just throw everything up the board <laughs> and eat." <laughs> eat. <laughs> actually thinking about my tactics <laughs> which paid off in our most recent game i had a tactic i stuck with it i followed through with it and i and no spoilers but the the tactic worked out for me perfect i'm learning it's <laughs> <But laughs> nice you, you, it'll happen you, eventually in a in a tyranids versus world eater game mm -hmm. i mean it's only going to end one way <laughs> Oh, yeah. Everything's dying. It's either getting Everyone's eaten happy. or decapped. Yeah, corn's yeah. happy. The hive mind's happy. Everyone's happy. It's My just friend. a great time. Yeah, like corn just wants to throw its blood at the, the um, tyrannids. Tyrannids are like, yes, give me the blood. Yeah. I will turn it Leave into it. more tyrannids. Yeah. To throw at you, to kill. To throw at you again. You see, dark angels might destabilize that a bit. So I think, you know. That, that's going to cause some grudge matches there. I think Tyranids and World Eaters are very happy to just keep killing each other. That's a fun game. Yeah, Dark Angels, they're going to come in a bit sneaky with some... Mysterious purposes. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so obviously you've you've done um, a couple of uh, Crusade Bat Reps now, um, which is really interesting to me. Um, when Crusade was announced, you know, with, with Ninth Edition, mm -hmm. I was a little bit... I wasn't sure. I re I love narrative gaming. Don't get me wrong. I love playing those really fluffy telling a story games, right? Yeah. But the way I I don't know. I I, I haven't dived into Crusade yet. But seeing your games, the last few games you've with um with with uh Maxine's Coward Lord and um Sir Robin. <laughs> Sir Robin, yes, <laughs> definitely. And um the the kind of persistence or the the RPG nature of how how like your your particular squads and characters are kind of leveling up a bit or however it's mm -hmm. phrased in the book, um, I'm guessing you're both enjoying it. But t t tell me, um, uh, uh, Maxine, tell me first, how are you finding it as maybe more of a veteran player, someone who's you know played a bit longer, been in the hobby mm -hmm. a bit longer? How are you liking it? Yes, again, I was super skeptical with kind of how the Crusade thing worked because. The way I saw them kind of upgrading and stuff, I was like, well, it's no longer a Chaos Lord now if he's constantly getting three more attacks for no reason. Or, right. You know, it becomes a different unit. So yes. I was like, yeah, I'm not really sure I, I buy this because I, I love the narrative. I used to love creating my own missions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I used to love saying, like, you have 750 points, I have 1,000 points, let's 
ram into each other and then you come with me with 1500 points and i fight again with what i've got right it i i like doing those kind of things um so i was again very skeptical uh, particularly because I really enjoy match play. I think that's the best way to kind of learn the game, understand yeah. what your units can do. It's the most sort of balanced format where you can really get a more chess feel game to it. Yeah. Uh, whilst also including a narrative aspect as yeah. well. Um, but the, as I started playing after my first Crusade game, I thought it was amazing. Like you grow attachments to your individual units that become, instead of just a berserker squad of six men, it becomes my berserker squad it beca- you know okay. becomes a squad of five people that you can you can get behind as people and as they begin leveling up and you you say oh i really want him to level up because he, uh, he does a lot of work in my games like if i get him to re-roll ones as well like he's gonna be super tasty <laughs> going into the next time and you begin forming attachments to your little guys except my leader because he's terrible <laughs> this guy does nothing i wanted khan but i couldn't upgrade that guy Oh, name, name, name characters already have a lore behind them. So mm. it's the aim is for Crusaders to try and get new, you know, generic characters and then make them feel better. And I just, yeah. like, couldn't bring Khan, but fair enough. So Robin, you know, he's he's building a story, you know, yes. it's, it's the disappointment it's... of the world. He just... Yes. Indeed. Yeah. And the missions are fun. The missions are fun in the crusade and you know they kind of, we've kind of tried to set our crusade so it follows the story so yeah in the first game like i i won as a example then i was like going out of my way of to try and find this relic so i could then push my advantage kind of thing and, right you know katie then came back found her version of the relic and is now pushing into my area okay so i really tried to follow that story yeah um and katie for you I, I, as a as a obviously you're not a new to the thing to, to warhammer as a whole but as maybe a bit newer new to, to the playing. game to playing yeah. yeah sure compared to like your first however many games you played of you know regular match play or however you first played diving into crusade how are you enjoying that as a newer player i'm really enjoying it okay. um I had no real opinions beforehand. Um, I was a bit worried doing Crusade, starting to do the bat reps, because again, I think that worry of someone commenting saying I was doing it wrong came in. Right. So I think as a result, we have kind of kept the story that we've got behind it a little bit more just to ourselves. Yeah. um, Just to (laughs) help help me with my own insecurities. But we have a story going on behind it. Right. That we can be under wraps. but I'm just, I'm finding it so much fun. I feel like, and I'm not sure exact, <clears throat> exactly why. Um, I'm sure I, I can talk to someone and figure it out. I feel like I'm learning the rules faster. Really? Playing Crusade. That's Especially playing with the same units over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. You learn their rules really well. You start to learn where you should be using specific stratagems a bit better because I had no idea. <laughs> I, I didn't even know what my stratagems were um, when I was playing before we did the crusade right. and I keep forgetting them and not really use them properly so I feel like it's just accelerated my learning to play I feel like I'm playing a lot better and I think the missions are a lot easier okay. rather than just yeah. thinking about your secondaries and holding the points mm-hmm. there are actual it feels like you've got a goal to work towards um, yeah, and I if feel we like take the think... relic for an example mm-hmm. it's like You've got one relic. You've got to get control that one yeah. point. You've got to either be there at the end, kind of thing. Whereas, you know, in a match play scenario, you're thinking, right, how am I going to get scramblers this turn? How am mm-hmm. I going to dominate? How am I going to keep my units on the board long enough that I get my points next turn for primary? And likewise, if I do that, am I screwed for turn three? That's it. And I Have think I just thrown all my assets? Have things. I traded up? Have I traded down? Right. That's so I'm trying to a lot easier. That's that's such a great you know it's a really good point because you know I wouldn't think of that um, mm-hmm. and, as using it as a, as, as a tool as a, as a teaching method as what whatever um, if if you know next time I'm I've got a new player that might yeah. be honestly that might be the best way yeah. forward because it looks well, like, like great if fun I, if you lose a game you've got the next game in the crusade mm. to go on to yeah so it's not as heartbreaking when you lose or right. when you know, one of your units. You still get upgrades. Yeah. Even you if you leave. Okay. You still get um, experience points. Yeah. 
Yeah, and going back to you learning a stratagems, like one good example in like the Relic game, for example, mm. you were thinking like, if I go first, I could use Metabolic Overdrive with my big 20 man grub of blob mm -hmm. of Termagorns. I can move them nine inches. So they're within three inches of this Relic. I can pick up the Relic turn one, give it to the one at the back of my Termagorns. <laughs> this Termagorns now at the back, hiding behind the big blob of Gene Stealers and, and other guys. And you go, come I get me. I go first that turn, but um, that, in that game, but. <laughs> That but was you my can plan. Then, exactly. But then you can transfer that into mm -hmm. um, a match play game and yeah. you can go, right, my Termagants can now metabolic overdrive onto this point and get dominate when they're actually, you know, 18 inches the other way. Okay. That's it's a really good learning tool. That's mm. that's good. That That's really good information. Um, that, I, I like that a lot. Um, so from what I can tell, um, Maxine, well, from what we know, Maxine, you're the more experienced player. Um and your help, you've been helping Katie, you know, obviously in the bat reps, um, with, you know, with tactics and, and, and guidance. And obviously, as we just talked about, the crusade has been a great learning tool. Um, what would you advise um, or what advice can you offer to, you know, someone like me, so anyone else, when you're teaching a newer player who's obviously excited and loves the game? Um, mm -hmm. what, what sort of tips can you give? And what do you think has helped Katie stick with it, like, and and and, and get as excited for it as she, as she obviously is? Yeah, I think a, a big advantage I have is that I know Katie very well, uh, right. so I know what kind of works and what doesn't work. I know what will make her tip the board, for example, <laughs> and I know I know what would make her take her models and go. You know what? No, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to go sit and paint and look at them. So I, I have a rough indication of kind of, you right. know, what, what works for her. But I think some of the three main points are, is around her playing or people playing with models they love. Mm. They want to pick up the models they want, they want to see playing. If they want to be playing with the Swarm Lord, because it just really appeals to them, great. Doesn't matter if it's competitive. Doesn't matter if it can do anything on the tabletop. You know, they want to play with it. If they want to play with their Orc Boys, you know, bring a big blob of orc boys and say, look, here you go. Here's some orc boys. Go wild. Right. Um, and then you tailor a list that will work around that okay. and go, actually, what list, if I was, you know, wanting to go up again, what would I really struggle to win with? Okay. You know, because there's no substitute for winning right. or having small victories. So they're very, they saw them winning with their, their big model, right? Yeah. Um, which is what we had in, in one of some of our first games is I let Katie Swarmlord run rampant and I built a list that meant that she could let me just do that. Yeah. eat up the board with this Swarmlord and just go, Rah! Yeah. And, and that's what she did. Like, and she completely wrecked, cleaned house and just like, yeah. I, I won the mission because I moved my cultists and sat on points and went, yay. <laughs> just to make me feel better. But Katie just yay. completely <laughs> demolished me at the same time. I, yeah. did, I took moral victory in that game because I have more units standing. Killing is all that's important in Warhammer, right? And, and she had a, a lot of fun doing so. And yeah. I think that was a, a, a great starting point. And the next thing as well is, you know, kind of, if you're wanting to sell the hobby to someone new, make sure you've kind of got the terrain, a board and painted models. Because if you can build that immersion, mm. you get really get to sell what the hobby is. Yeah. Because the game fundamentally was 40K is amazing, but it's super complicated. And if you're just seeing these grade models with and playing around other things, people who may not know the law behind, you know, say the ultramarines or, you know, how deep um, a connection you might have with like the word bearers, for example, and why they want to bring these possessed squads. It's like, mm, you know, I, I don't, I, it's fun as a game, but I don't really get it. Right. But if you've got these painted models and go, right, this, you know, this is, you know, this dark apostle here is like, you know, praying to the gods, for example, and is making these demons hit harder, for example. It's like, hey, like, yeah, I, I can rock, I can rock with this as you're on this like demonic circle. Like, it, you can really sell the hobby that way. Yeah. Um, I think those are the, the best ways to get someone in the hobby. And then as you're talking tactics, it's you're kind of thinking, what do they want to get from the game? If they want to improve in match play, which is what Katie wanted to do, right. she wanted to be a little bit more competitive with her units. It's like, well, okay, why don't you just tell me, why did you move that? 
and it's like you know what was your thought process and you're like well i want to kill that unit because it's scary i'm like okay but what's the what's going to happen next time mm. you, you've kind of just moved your gene stealers up yes you've cleaned house on my five-man chaos space marine squad on the point but i've got three hammer um berserker squads back here I just need one of these to take out your yeah. gene stealers. Like, yeah. and then I've got two more hammers sitting back, going to take you off again and again. Yeah. Like, what, what's your thought process? Why don't you just send your warriors up? You, you'll have, take one of my space marines off, and you've got five obsec on instead of my four. You're holding the point with these big three wing models. Yeah. What's kind of your? Would that be something you would consider, or would you try and think about just shooting the space marines off and not moving up, or are you still happy with your gene stealers? And it gave her options to start thinking. I like shooting. I'm just going to shoot with my exocrine. <laughs> yeah. And then it kills everything and I leave. <laughs> um, okay. So, so Kate, kind of following on from that, mm -hmm. um, what was it about like how Maxine just described like her perspective of, of, yeah. of teaching you, guiding you through the game? What was it that you appreciated and and seemed to help you enjoy the game and and enjoy learning and playing more? And obviously, you said earlier you, you love the game, you love playing. What what was it yeah. about that process that helped you there? Well, definitely learning to play. Mm -hmm. um, Maxine has struck a pretty good balance now of helping me enough, but not too much. Right. Okay. Because if you're just sitting there telling someone what to do, that takes all the fun out of it. And I think there were a couple of games where you gave me advice and I kind of had to turn around and say, do you know what? I just want to make my own decision right now um, and see how I'm, how how this plays out for me so I can make that mistake and learn. Um, because if you, if you are being given constant advice, that is frustrating mm -hmm. <laughs> as a new player. But as, yeah, but it, enough that it's, oh, you could do this this is an option right. or don't forget that I can do this. Like I would constantly forget that she could deep strike her terminators. Okay. And I would oh, never have anything in the back. So they would come in and take out my exocrine, right, which I hate. Yeah. And I, yeah. and it, I had no idea how I could keep things back because in my head I was like, but I can't keep things back. So I need to go up and get the points. Yeah, screening was not a tactic you had about just no. zoning out of some parts of the board. And it's like, well, if you spread out your term termagons, you know, they're not getting any cover anyway. Like, why don't you just, you know, make them into this big checkered board and just say, yeah. no, I can't get near you that way. Makes me, I can't get near you on the other side. I don't have enough space on the board. I can't go for your exocrine now. Mm -hmm. So if I want to bring in my red butcher terminators, all I can do is come in and throttle some, you know, poor um, Tyranid warrior or something. Yeah. Okay. And I think as well, like, I do get frustrated playing. Um, I'm quite, I'm naturally a very competitive person. Um, I always want to be winning. And I think mm. being a competitive person, it's really hard when you're learning something because you know you're not gonna win. And it's because the other person is just better than you at the game. And that's yeah. fine. There's nothing wrong with playing someone better than you. Yeah. Um, she's been playing a lot longer than me. She plays chess, <laughs> which I don't. Um, she's a very, I mean, Maxine, you are a very clever person you are very intelligent um so it can and it can be frustrating <laughs> playing I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna i'm on i'm nice i'll give her a little ego boost um and it, and it can be frustrating and accepting that sometimes if you're playing with someone who is new they will get frustrated yeah and that's fine because they're learning yeah and learning is a frustrating process the irony is I don't care if I win or lose. Yeah, you don't care if you win or lose. Um, and equally, and it's the reason it's so lucky we we play and live together, is if I get frustrated and want to go, right, let's cool down for an hour. Let's, um, let's stop playing today. Let's come back to this tomorrow when I've got a bit more of a clear head and I'm not stressed because I can get a bit stressed sometimes. Like, we can do that. Yeah. Um, we don't have any, oh, we're playing a game. We're playing this to, to finish. Right. You know, I have the space to um, to be myself and just take it all in. Yeah, That's... sometimes you just need a comforting moment to say, actually, you did just lose your exocrine, I know, but you're going to win the game. I've got four models left. 
Yeah. And that was the units I just killed your exo with. Sometimes I just, I can't, like, you can get so annoyed that you're like, I can't even see that I'm doing the game, like, I'm doing really well because I've just lost, like, this model or I just had a really bad dice roll. <laughs> so you can't, you lose sight of the game. Yeah. Um, that, that's, that's, that's really interesting from both your perspectives there. Um, I, I think it, it shows through uh, to, to someone in the audience, someone watching, the progression in in the games. Obviously, of your abilities and, and decision making and critical thinking, and just in I think the last one I watched, which was maybe last week, um, like you you were using screening, yeah. like which was something that I, I believe Maxine had even pointed out in a previous bat rep. That maybe you should have done, and and there you go. So, and, and I think your your, your point there a bit about being able to step away, and just, and I, do, I there's there's a a Black Library book. Um, you, I'm, I'm sure you're both at least familiar with the Horus Heresy, and uh, one of the more recent Siege of Terror books. So Rogel Dawn, right? The uh, the Imperial Fist Primarch. He's doing this little, it starts off and he's, you know, defending terror against Horus and the, the you know, all, all the real good guys, but, you know, chaos. <laughs> but um, he, he's actually stepping away from like the, the tactical room, strategium, whatever it is, and um, standing in a garden, like a, like a, you know, a beautiful garden and having five minutes to himself. And someone questions him, like, why are you doing this? You're in the middle of the, the biggest battle or the biggest war we've ever known. And he's like, sometimes you just need to just forget about it, even for a moment. And I, I know that's like obviously comparing <laughs> some, literally the defense of Earth. But <laughs> the perspective is kind of, sometimes in, no matter what it is in life, whether it's a game of Warhammer Something at work. I find the same home. in sport. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, that, it's that, huge for me in sport. Like, yeah. You, you see a lot of like youngsters, for example, and it means everything to them. They put so much pressure on themselves as they go out to play. Whereas I've play, played many games, and it's just like I go out and play. I'm like, it's just a game. Right. Okay. Nothing. Nothing I'm playing here is going to make a difference. And as a result, you think a lot more clearly about what your aims and achievements are going to try and be at this moment, or how am I going to you know, put the throttle down at certain points in the game to make a difference. Yeah. Just because you're not busy thinking, I've got to be the best, I've got to be the best. Yeah. Okay. Um that that actually leads me to it to, to another quick question. Um so you you both play cricket, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean that that's also I love cricket and obviously living here in the US no one knows what it is. That. Yeah, no one. <laughs> Other than unless you're expats, uh, right? Yeah, and it's so difficult to to get to watch here. Do you find that that being sported, you know, playing a game like cricket because it's, you know, th there's so much kind of like long term tactics involved in a game like that. It's not mm -hmm. like a, a similar, a, right? Okay. Uh, do you, do I review? Um, do, do you how do you apply that? Like Maxine, is it what, what can you transfer from cricket like is it the way you think um yeah thinking ahead game scenarios understanding that in cricket it's a sport that you never you can never go like who's winning right who's winning right now it's not like you know football and soccer like kind of thing where you go oh you know there's three nil up kind of thing and in cricket you go right well you, you know 250 for two but you know you've still got five days play left for right, example yeah. playing you know, the formats we play, it's like, well, you've got at the halfway stage, you've got, okay, we've scored 200 or 50 overs. Are you ahead or not? And they're like, well, the other team's got a much better batting unit, but we've got a stronger bowling unit. Our, you know, the pitch is going to change a little bit. Yeah. I know these are alien concepts for your US viewership, but um, oh, yeah. basically anyone outside a Commonwealth country, basically. <laughs> um, and it's just, Whereas, and Warhammer is very similar, right? So you could take an earlier point advantage in a game with, say, knights, for example. Mm. But very later on in the game when you're playing with knights, is you, you don't have any knights to hold points right. with because people start killing you. So you take this big early lead, you go out, you can throttle big damage. But once you start losing one or two knights, your ability to play the game is, you know, becomes 
a lot harder. So actually seeing a few steps down the line and understanding how you control your nights to kind of make sure that you can get the best out of that later position. There's a lot of parallels to be made between cricket and and these kind of sports. So if you've been in that environment for a long time, you can start thinking that way in 40K, for example, and chess. Yeah, yeah. Um, Katie, I know um, in for, for your team, um, you, I, I believe you mentioned you were possibly being kind of looked at to, to be captain, maybe? Is that yeah. something that's still in the world? I think I think it's, it's one of those things where we have... Um, a couple of people who would normally take a captioning role, but they're now moving away. They're, right. they're getting older, going away to university. And I think I'm now the the kind of, because I'm not moving, I'm staying. Right. And I'm looked at now as the kind of, the substitute for when those more experienced players are away. It, yeah, yeah, you're in that bracket, age bracket yeah. where you can kind of hang with the older girls in the group who are like in their mm -hmm. late 30s, have a bit more experience, but the similar ability and like the youngsters who are coming through because you're very much a grassroots cricket. So, yeah. And, and um, likewise, you're not the best, best in the team, but you're also more than good enough that the best, best kind of respect you for being a good mm -hmm. player. And those who are underneath start thinking, actually, you're someone who's learned the game and you learned how to be good that's something to, for them to aspire to. So you're in that kind of perfect bracket for that kind of, kind of role. I know, yeah. Maxine, you're, I, I know you're, you're a very skilled, accomplished batter. Uh, Katie, what, 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 what do you play? Um, I bowl. What sort? So, uh, wrist spin, both I, leg spin and um, I can bowl googly. Oh, I'm She's so She's hyper mobile, so she can do I'm things I cannot so even jealous. try. Yeah, so I've got like hug my bar shoulders, elbows, wrists, so I can I can spin the ball both ways. I can get top spin on it, which will trick some of the better batters in our league because yeah. they'll think they can come down the pitch and cart it for four, and it will dip on them. They'll miss it. It will either take their stunts or go straight to the keeper, who will then take take the bells off. I, I'm to, sneaky. <laughs> to, to 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 the American viewers here. And, and like I said, anyone from a non-Commonwealth country, I apologise. Th this to me is like the, the ultimate conversation. And I understand this is a Warhammer channel. Um, the but the collective mix. With yeah. Canada. Oh, oh, oh. I, I, I want to I, I dive in. But maybe maybe I'll start a cricket fan YouTube channel and head <laughs> back on for that. Um, I love that. But, um, okay, I'm super jealous. I, I I was an okay batter and I could not bowl to save my life. Yeah, I was gonna ask what did you do? If I could get through the if I could bowl and it went in vaguely the right direction, that was yeah. good. And if I could if I could bat and and maybe make two overs, that was good for me. Without getting out. I mean not by knocking the wicket off myself. So I I, I was normally out in the outfield, and yeah, I was. Oh, I, I, I can, I could watch cricket. I, 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 when I tell people a game of cricket can last five days, what? Completely lost on anyone who yeah. doesn't play. Even the short format lasts. Yeah, the yeah, shortest format he can play is three and a half well, hours. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm gonna. All right. Forty k. Warhammer. Yes. Sorry. So, uh, Maxine. Um, let, let, let's dive a little bit more into the kind of chaos, nitty gritty here, the, the, mm -hmm. the, what we want. So one of my kind of favorite questions to, to sort of dive into here. Um, obviously, at some point, hopefully, we're going to get a codex, right? We're going to get a chaos Thousand codex. Thousand Sons have got one. Death Guard have got one. Oh, why? Four meters are way more loved than Thousand yes. Sons. Like, yes. Come on. I know the South and Sons look pretty, but World Eaters have got a much bigger fan base and they've got much bigger lore to kind of get more units yeah. from, I think. Yeah. Look, being covered in blood is attractive, mm. you know. It's got an it's got its own aesthetic to it. Yeah. You know. But okay, what would you like to see? If 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 we were to get GW announced today, World Eaters Codex or World Eaters Supplement coming, mm -hmm. what's some things, you know, one, two, couple things, three things that you would just love to see? Rules-wise, yeah. models-wise, anything you want, what would you like to definitely. see? I think definitely model-wise, there's three main units that are obvious. Okay. Obviously, you've got Angron. 
the Primark. Yes. Yeah, because you got you got more Terry, and he's such a tanky beast. He yeah. plays how he should. You've yeah. got, you know, uh, Magnus, who is a psychic destructor, mm. and in close combat, he can wreck stuff yeah. anyway. Angron, you kind of need to have there as well. He's still around in law ways. Yeah. He's got, he's a big ass demon prince. He's gonna, they, how they're doing the models now with like Velikor as the demon prince. He would look stunning. Oh, and yeah. I think it would be beautiful. Mm. And they will get a lot of sales from that anyway. Um, then you've got Red Butcher Terminators as their own sort of yes. unique model set. I think they've done really well with the Scarab Occult. Mm -hmm. Ones for Thousand Suns. Obviously, you've, for Death Guard, they've got the two, their two own versions. Yeah. Kind of look the same to me, to be honest. But they look... They're, they're quite cool, nice sculpts yeah, from yeah, what yeah. I hear. Yeah. They, they, they are kind of cool, but yeah. They're not um, so Red Butcher Terminators, just as their own models, look amazing. And you don't have to pay two point stratagems every game, and right. you can only have one unit. And like, yeah. I bring them for fluffy reasons every mm. game regardless, because for me, that's like one of the only two unique units you can yeah. bring for World Eater. So yeah. I just bring them. Um, and then obviously you need that chaff unit that like instead of Zangas and Poxwalkers, you kind of want like this sort of like unique two-legged dog that's like red and just wants to like yeah you know like this you kind of like how you got with the zangers instead of making them more like goat people make them more like these hellhounds yeah that's like stand up and just want to kind of use their teeth and just yeah. like rip things that way i think that would be beautiful yeah I love that. um and I, I don't want to like replace Coldest because I think they should have a builder codex very similar around what Thousand Sons have done. They don't need to release all these billions of character models that you've got in um, uh, Death Guard. So yeah. it's just to build a codex. I think, you know, still have, having access to, to demon engines is still very lore appropriate for mm -hmm. the World Eaters. And it means that World Eaters players don't have to throw all their um, other units out just because they've got their new codex. Yeah. Um, so I think that would be particularly interesting. And one idea I think would be really attractive is like a Blood Priest style character. Because obviously we have nothing in the Psychic phase, yeah. but why not build something that we can either use in the Command phase or later on that can kind of really, as the blood's flowing, like if mm -hmm. you've, we've killed so many models, it yes. begins to buff up harder and harder kind of thing. Yeah. Or you have the ability that if you're not killing enough, he could potentially kill some of our own units as a sacrifice to buff up things even harder yes. kind of thing. I think that would be really interesting. Yeah. And as you know, the way that, you know, they're building these new codexes, they're building them super fluffy, mm. you know, things are really following kind of how each faction should be played and kind of law wise, they're kind of following that. And I think if they did something similar with world eaters, that would be a pretty attractive and kind of, super narrative way to, to play them kind of thing you don't mind if your units die but as long as they can get more killy i think yeah and then rule wise like how can you make your you know world eater stand up i think what they're really missing is a little bit of a delivery mechanism just to get them into combat a little better whether it's a a special stratagem that lets them just jump out of a rhino while it's moving kind of yeah you have to roll ones and twos and they'll die from that way or you know you roll ones they die yeah. but they can move up nine inches or like 10 12 inches in this rhino just jump out like mad things and then and then charge kind of thing i think yeah. that would be pretty lure appropriate you don't have to create new models but it's a or oh, and you can just pay a stratagem two point stratagem one point stratagem just to be able to have the option to deliver them that bit harder. It's much better than the same, like the Blood Angels, where they just get minus one to your charge kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it feels a bit generic. And yeah. and likewise, um, it, it feels like it'll just follow the law just a little bit better. Yeah. Um, those are the key things I'd love to see, because I don't need them to be super durable. I don't think World Eaters is that's their way for yeah. Death Guard follow that super durable really well. You just and I think they're already quite killy. Like berserkers are already like one of the best killing units in the game. Yes. I just think they need ways to be able to deliver that kind of mechanism. That's kind of fun and lure appropriate. Whilst having a few new models just to, to move around as well, other than yeah. just berserkers and Khan. Yeah, I I could not agree with you anymore. Like yeah, I every literally everything you said. I I would love to see Angron. Oh. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, that would be take my money, please. 
<laughs> oh, it would be, it would be, it would be absolutely glorious. Like, I, I, I don't know if I could contain myself. Like, I, I'm worried that if, if time permitting, you know, the next time Games Workshop does one of their uh, like Saturday morning uh, reveal videos. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm always thinking like YouTube wise, I could do like a live stream a as it's going right. And if they was to announce something like that, <sighs> yes, I would humiliate myself on on on. Like, I, I I wouldn't care if they was to if they was to tease Angron. Mm -hmm. Oh my! I, I'm just just thinking about oh. <laughs> but yeah, they do a great job. I know it. Yes. I mean, just looking at what we've seen of uh, Bellacor so far, is oh, it's just, a beautiful just skull. a huge sort of dem demon. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yes, I completely, everything you said, I would keep in that mix between like the, the aggressive competitiveness that we need as world eaters, mm -hmm. but also that it, it's got to remain fluffy and we don't want to be overpowered or broken. I don't want any of that. I want to play world eaters, as I'm sure you do, and anyone who plays their army... When you make your moves and your charges and your shooting and whatever else you've got, it wants to feel in theme. Like, mm. yeah, I and I, I'm I'm liking how they're doing it so far, and I, I'm just hopeful that if some of the things you mentioned, like the the disembark after moving or so, something like that, it's perfect. Um, yeah. So uh, all right. So kind of the same question to you, Katie. Um, whether you want to, you know, go for Tyranids or, or anything else, but I, I mean, obviously, we anyone who sees you knows you as a Tyranid player. So, I, what would you like to see coming up, codex wise, model wise, in anything rules wise? What what would you like? So we were actually having a conversation about this yesterday. We had okay. a long card journey, and <laughs> we're talking about Tyranids because that's let's be honest, all we talk about is Warhammer and cricket. Uh, that's. <laughs> I'm That's like, okay, to, 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 pardon? I'm Pokemon. Pokemon. Star Wars, Yu-Gi-Oh. Star Wars. Anything nerdy, pretty much. Yeah, Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Throw that in there. Um, I mean, the main thing I want is I want the bugs to be less squishy. Okay. That just they don't big bugs livable. Even the, the, the big, big bugs. bugs, like the Exocrine dies and loses yes. wings so easily. Yeah. I mean, he should be more durable. I want the Carnifexes to be scary. Yeah. <laughs> you want I the Invon saves just it. a little <laughs> bit because there's so much big AP going yeah. around that even though the Exocrine is toughness eight, you know, I, I can get through, as long as I get some of my volume it through, with minus three AP, like it just shreds through. And mm -hmm. like, you know, I then go D3 wounds, five, you know, it's only got 12 wounds, right? Something like that. It's not hard to to chew through once you get there. Um, the Swarm Lord's pretty tanky. That's quite scary, yeah. especially as Leviathan. I think um, yeah. three up in Von in combat with a six up, feel no pain. Ugh. Yeah, I do like that. It did. It, it sends me shivers, that guy. What? Um, um, who, who's, which, um, was it? It's Hive Fleet, I believe it's like mm -hmm. Legion. Tra who is it you normally play as? Leviathan. It is Leviathan. They're, like, they're the paint scheme I have. Okay, right. I, re I think I remember. We love WYSIWYG. Yeah. Plus, yeah. I think Leviathan is one of the best for learning okay. how Tyranids work because it's kind of like that soft um, trait on the background that benefits everybody. It's that yeah, six up, feel no pain within damage. Synapse. So it just means you, it's three. more forgiving. Okay. Whereas, like, some of the other ones is heavily geared towards shooting or heavily geared towards you know running up and doing close combat things and you have mm. to build a list very around that whereas leviathan's all about having a very cohesive army that works both yeah, for leviathan shooting is, both is... in combat and just means you can learn all your different models and you can bring all your different models and they can still get a buff from it okay yeah. if um all right, it's kind of a kind of related as as the kind of hobby as the painter right um if, if if you could get a brand new Tyranid model, right? Mm -hmm. and it, w whether it was like an infantry kind of little gribbly bug or a big flying monster, I don't know. And and GW said, Katie, look, we want, we, we've got this model. We want you to paint it. You're the first person and you can tell us, right? 
What what if you could pick one model for GW to produce as a Tyranid? What what would you ask them to produce? Don't worry about the rules or any of that stuff. I'm talking as, from a hobbyist painter's perspective. Do you like the big, you know, or the gene stealer type stuff? What would you like to see more of? I have been really in love with my gene stealers and broodlord. Okay, and oh, okay. I would love to see something that's like a broodlord but chunkier <laughs> like just bigger meaner more aggressive looking like more i'd love it if they made the tyranid scarier like a okay. bit more aggressive. Ooh, um, okay. are you thinking more... like a character brood lord kind of thing like a super mm -hmm. special brood lord like you get the swarm lord as a special unique yeah. character hive tyrant potentially a brood lord that is terrifying <laughs> Yeah, I want to. I want to see a tuna that looks like it could come straight out of harmony. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. Because I, I mean, I know tyranids. They do have obviously the what the the swarm lord, and then I think you get old one eye is a character for, for a particular and the red terror. The red terror, yeah, which has a, a metal sculpt. Yeah, like a really mm -hmm. old sculpt, I believe. Um, but yeah, you it, it's obviously. Tyranids are one of those weird factions where it's kind of hard to write in. Yeah. Because it's the hive mind. You can't write anything from a Tyranid perspective. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Um, and usually anything that comes into contact with Tyranids don't does not out. come in contact with them again. Yeah, right. <laughs> Even the gene stealer cults get eaten by the Tyranids. So. Yeah, yeah. No, no one wins. Yeah. No, Just... no, no the Tyranids win. Well, yeah. The hive mind wins. They're, they're, they're... Their bellies get full for a little while, yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, it's a pleasant, pleasant <laughs> afternoon picnic, isn't it? So, um, okay. So, um, all right. I, I want to go on to the last question I've got here. Um, and this uh, uh, for both of you. I, I'll start with Maxine. Have you ever either ever played competitively, or would you ever consider playing com competitively? I'm talking like going to tournaments, uh, mm -hmm. the ITC. You know, anything like that. Is that something that interests you at all or has ever interested you? Yeah, 100% interests me. Okay. Previously, I've not really had the time. Right. And it's kind of the main reason we picked up the hobby now more recently is just because time and finances allow that you, we can do so much. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, it was university, traveling on graduate schemes. And then now's the first real opportunity I've had settled. So I think definitely for me, it's going to be just building up the confidence playing with some other people first and just getting right. in you know making sure i i feel comfortable with understanding knights and the rule sets but then going to right. i think i'm already there but it's just feeling like you know i can do this it will be fun I, i'm def i'm definitely behind doing it and i'll 100 percent play well leaders i would not care if i win would not care if i lose games i, I want to play with the models i love yeah um and play them to the best I, I can bring. Like, I always want to play the faction I enjoy, but play it the best it can be. Yeah. That's that's, that's what I want to do. Okay. Katie, what about you? It is, I, obviously, you said earlier you're a very competitive person. Does hitting the competitive scene seem like something you'd like to try out? So it's kind of... A tale of two parts so being a competitive person it is very intriguing to me but also being a competitive person who is still very new at, <laughs> at playing yeah. the thought is terrifying because as a competitive you know wanting to win going into something where you're probably not going to win that, that's that's quite a tricky thing to deal with um again i definitely need to play play some more people so far mm -hmm. the only person i've played ever has been maxine and yeah. um, you do get a little bit of leeway playing with your partner yeah, you've known, sure. you know, who you've been with for 10 years it's a bit you you get those leeways that you won't get with other people but i've already started um we've got some friends who live in another county who we're planning they're going to come up for a long weekend and okay. i think they have like nine armies between them oh my goodness. <laughs> gonna bring they've got so many weekend. factions they're ridiculous um they keep just buying new new factions so they're going to bring those up and we're okay. going to have some fun games with them yeah. just to and I get a little taster and I've got a couple of people who've reached out on Instagram who want to come and I think it's for the table I think they should want to come and play the table <laughs> I'm not gonna lie um oh I got I got a um 
I got tagged in something to post my most liked photo from March the other day, and it was one of me up at the table. I, I saw just, that. Yeah, I saw the, that. The amount of times I just want to say, I think you guys are only following me for the table at this point. <laughs> so yeah, I've got it's a plans. beautiful table. <laughs> it is. I love it so much. The best thing about purchasing, because I'm tall, it's like a bar height as well. So it's oh. like this three, like four foot tall table, uh, and it really play surface off the ground. Okay. Yeah. And with like a big three, four inch well, so it yeah. takes up, yeah. the, it takes a room. Yeah. So I've got, I've got plans to ha to start playing a couple of people. And I think when I'm more comfortable, I start with like some little, probably local things, oh, yeah. just playing a bit more competitively. Yeah. Um, and I'm never going to be the kind of person who goes, I want to be the best. I want to be the best tennis player there is. I want to be the most competitive. Um, but I like setting goals for myself. Mm. Like with cricket, I've, I've set myself a goal this season. I want to be one of the top five wicket takers in the league. Okay. So I think that will be something I will start setting myself goals of, oh, I want to play a certain number of people, like different people yes. in a year, or I want to play a certain faction and yeah. have like the points differential be le like less than a certain amount. Yeah. So I think I'm competitive in that way. Okay. I think and that's, that. I think that's a really great way of, looking at it um competing I, I won't say against yourself but for yourself like you you've, you yeah. you want to set your goals to you know maybe you want to be a dark eldar player this month or something or yeah. you know may, uh, you've lost two games against imperial guards so you want to you want to get three wins or something yeah um okay well this one th th this is unfortunately exclusively for maxine unless she was ever to pick up world eaters um if you do play some uh, some competitive stuff this season, Maxine, um, there's a uh, I we've got a uh, the channel's doing a uh, giveaway for the best ITC scoring player this year in the world, whoever it is, okay. a Latara Sarin bust commission painted. That's that's going to whoever wins. So okay. that's a that's a motivation to be the best. I'll do my best. And it's just the world. You have to be the number one world eaters player. Okay. No, you haven't got to win the UK or anything like that. You just have Still to beat... rack up some points. Yeah, I think there were. I think it was like fifty-four World Eaters players in the world last year. Mm. So that's not bad odds. You know, rack up yeah. some. You know, hit some good tournaments. There's a, but um, I want to thank you both so much for for coming on and talking. For the best part of an hour and a half now, you're giving me your Sunday morning. I really appreciate that. Um, this has been so much fun. <laughs> Just yeah, thank you for having us. It's I always enjoy talking. Like, I'll talk to Warhammer with anyone. Like unfortunately, no one in my house wants to talk Warhammer. <laughs> so, oh, I, you know, a couple of girls in in England want to talk Warhammer on their Sunday morning. I'm up for that. Yes, let's do it. And <laughs> I, I, I wish I wish we could have talked a bit more cricket as well because. It's, Next time, that's on again. <laughs> yeah, it's so. Oh, li living here, I, I I do love it for the most part here, but man, they are heathens with their sports here. Yeah, it's, baseball is not the same. No, it's cricket on easy mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's yeah, gonna I, be some thumbs down mitt. on that. <laughs> I want to catch this softish ball a... <laughs> with a big mitt because it hurts my hands. Even. <laughs> if you don't come away from a game with your hands blue, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. Um, what do you mean you can't bowl at their head? <laughs> That's not allowed. I was um, I was trying to explain to uh to to my friend at work. Uh, it's been a few months ago now. Um, a a, a Yorkie or, or a Yorker. Wait, mm -hmm. which, which mm -hmm. is it? God, it's been so long. Yeah, York. Yorker. Yeah. Got it. All right. Explain it for me, to me, as though I didn't know. So, because I was trying to explain it to him. Wait a minute. Is it Yorker? Well, you bowl basically at their feet. Is it that? Yeah. Yeah. Aim for the toes. Yeah. It, it what is the point of it? So I can show him this video and explain, and, and you know, out from professional and cricket players, break down a Yorker for me, please. Uh, it's basically aiming right at your toes, and you cannot get underneath the ball to hit it anywhere. You can't hit it up and into the stands. You can't hit it very easily, pretty much anywhere, and it's targeting your stance. So there's only really one thing you can do in theory, and that is just put your bat down, yeah, hit the ground down. into the floor, and just keep the ball out. It's, the aim is, of the Yorker is to surprise. Okay. You do it to me a lot. 
Exactly. And to dry runs. The downside mm -hmm. is in the modern age, it's losing its sort of appeal because if you get it wrong, you're going for six. You're going yeah. for four because you've bowled a full toss or you bowled one in a drivable slot, which is an easy ball to hit. So if it just bounces slightly before your feet, that's going. Okay. If you, you don't bounce it at all, it's going. Right. So you've got to get it right on their toes. Okay. Um, you, and you pretty even much the, only throw it in you, you, if you're doing bounces and you throw in a Yorker. Okay. Yeah, it's a surprise Surprise ball. them. Okay. <laughs> you're being mean. You, it's a it's a game, right? You're 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 trying to win the game. It's a team sport, and you're trying yeah. to defeat your opponent if it's within the rules. No, that's um, okay. Thank you very much for for coming on again. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time and having just a great chat about world eaters and you know well, even the tyranids. Of, <laughs> the the blood Slowly god attacking. will accept your it, cosmic hunger. It's gene, yeah, gene stealers are very similar to berserkers. Yes, yeah. They, I mean, they do eat the skulls afterwards, which is kind of missing the point. Yeah, they don't but, offer you know, it to anyone. Yeah. They don't. <laughs> okay, um, Maxine, Katie, thank you very much. Everyone watching, there'll be uh, links in the description. You need to go check out Katie plays forty k on Instagram. Great bat reps, some amazing paint jobs on there. It's it, just a great channel, especially as a World Eaters fan. If you're watching this, you obviously love the World Eaters. Go and check her out. Just great stuff. Ladies, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you so much, Jamie.